Before I get going with this video, I want to say a huge thank you for engaging with this material. If you want to find out more about me as a player, me as an educator, then go to my website www.chrisjolly.com and you'll find all the information there. Let's now get straight on to talking about the embouchure. Embouchure is all about how you use your teeth, your lips and your facial muscles to hold your mouthpiece in your mouth to create the best sound you possibly can. In this video, I'm going to presume that you've already put your reed on the mouthpiece. Now the reed is a very delicate part of the instrument. We want to make sure that we keep that safe. We don't want to be touching the reed with our teeth. So the first thing we need to do is put our bottom lip over our bottom teeth to form a cushion for the reed. Once you've formed that cushion, you're going to lay your reed on your bottom lip. And we want just enough of that mouthpiece inside your mouth so when you waggle your tongue, you can just feel the reed. Once your mouthpiece is inside your mouth, it's just a case of closing your mouth up, top teeth then rest on top of the mouthpiece, and you bring your lips together. Once your mouthpiece is inside your mouth, we want to make sure that we're forming a good, strong, round embouchure on the saxophone. We want to make sure that we're pulling the sides of our lips in nice and tight to form an equal pressure around all of that mouthpiece. The best way for me to describe this is forming an OO shape with your lips. We want to make sure that when we pull the sides of our lips in to form that OO, we have a soft chin. We don't want to have a flat chin. We also don't want to be pulling the sides of our lips outwards. We must make sure that we pull the sides of our lips in. So when I've got the saxophone inside my mouth, I'm forming an OO embouchure. When you first start working on your embouchure, I don't suggest that you start with the mouthpiece. The easiest way to get a sound and work on your embouchure is putting your mouthpiece together with the crook and blowing some nice, long, even sounds. <laughs> I'm going to try and demonstrate now how soft my chin is and how strong I need to be at the sides of my lips. One of the common questions I get about embouchure is the top teeth position on the mouthpiece. Now I do use, and a lot of players do use, a mouthpiece patch that sits on the mouthpiece. Now that's there for two reasons. The first reason is to protect the mouthpiece. Our teeth are generally quite sharp and this mouthpiece isn't going to last forever if we're digging our teeth into that mouthpiece. So to protect that mouthpiece we put a mouthpiece patch on. Another positive about using this mouthpiece patch is the grip that it creates between the teeth and the mouthpiece. Your teeth are going to be able to grip onto this mouthpiece patch more successfully than they are the mouthpiece. You can see my mouthpiece patch here. The two little grooves in there are the two grooves from my front teeth. If I didn't have that mouthpiece patch on there, I would be doing the mouthpiece some damage. You can see that there's quite a mark on my mouthpiece there. I might have to think about changing that one very soon. I don't want to be going through the mouthpiece patch and then into the mouthpiece. Another good thing about this is that when you start to develop your embouchure, your teeth will end up going back to the same position every time. We don't want to be moving our teeth forwards and backwards on the mouthpiece. We want to be keeping a good, secure, consistent embouchure throughout the whole range of the instrument. The mouthpiece patches come in slightly different thicknesses. It's just all about comfort. I tend to like going for the thicker mouthpiece patches, but by all means, get hold of a few different thicknesses, try them out and see what's comfortable for you. To show you how important it is to use a mouthpiece patch, I'm going to use my thumb as an example. I want you to do this now. If you put your teeth on your thumbnail, and slide your teeth around, it slides around quite easily. Now what I want you to do is move your teeth down to the fleshy part of your thumb and try and do the same thing. You'll find that your, your teeth are gripped hold of that skin a little bit more than they are the nail. And that's the same concept of using a mouthpiece patch. If you use a mouthpiece patch, you're going to get a little bit more grip with your top teeth on the mouthpiece. With out that mouthpiece patch it's going to feel like you're sliding around just like you did on your nail. When you start working on your embouchure there shouldn't be any significant pain from anywhere in your mouth. Players often can complain about their bottom lip, They're just inside the bottom lip where their bottom teeth are resting on it they can start to feel a little groove that appears and, and it starts to get a little bit painful. Even players who've had lips bleeding due to their embouchure, none of that should be happening. Yes, I think you will get a little groove in your bottom lip, just where your bottom teeth sit on there. But if you're finding that that's becoming really painful, or your lips starting to go numb, or your lips starting to bleed, then that means your embouchure is wrong. What you need to do at that point is work on strengthening the sides of your lips to increase that pressure here. Because what's happening is 
these muscles aren't strong enough to hold the mouthpiece in position. So you're compensating with that by biting from the bottom. If you bite from the bottom, you're gonna start damaging your lip. Not only are you you're gonna damage your lip, but you're gonna thin your sound out. You're gonna find that the, the sound goes thinner, less air is able to go through that mouthpiece, and you're not gonna sound as good. Saying that, one thing that might happen is the sides of your lips here start to get a little bit tired. That is absolutely normal. Think about going to the gym. You start working on a certain muscle group, those muscles will ache. Exactly the same applies for when you're using the corners of your mouth here. We don't necessarily need these muscles in our face too much. We need them a little bit to smile and a little bit to frown. We, we might need them to eat, we might need them to speak. We don't need to use them to the extent that we need to use them when we start forming an embouchure. And that's why you might feel that your sides of your lips here start to get a little bit tired, a little bit achy. If that starts to happen, that's absolutely normal. I would just suggest that you break your practice sessions up into smaller chunks. Don't get to the position where your embouchure is starting to fail due to the sides of your lips starting to ache. It's not going to help anything. Just put the instrument down, have a 10, 15 minute break or a couple of hours break, then come back to it and just see what it feels like. And here is a great exercise you can do away from your instrument to strengthen your embouchure. For the count of four, you want to bring in your lips really, really tight. You want to squeeze your lips as small as they possibly can get. And then for another count of four, you're going to open your mouth as wide as you can, stretch in those lips as much as you possibly can. So the whole exercise looks like this. And you're going to repeat that a number of times until it starts to get a little bit painful. And you will start to feel a little bit of a burn at the sides of your lips. Now that is exactly the same as going to the gym. If you're working on a certain muscle group, you're going to feel that muscle start to ache. And that's exactly what's happening here. You're building your embouchure muscles up by doing this repetitive a little training exercise for your lips. The final thing I want to mention is everybody is different. Everybody's mouth is built differently, everybody's teeth are different, everybody's tongue is different, so find the embouchure that works for you. By all means, use the things that I've mentioned in this video as a guide, and if you've got any specific questions, then please put them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to try and guide you a little bit more. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.